Alright, in this video we're going to do some uh, actual continuity examples. Um, and a little result I forgot to put in the last video is the following. It says these functions are continuous on their domains. So it doesn't say they're continuous everywhere, just on their domains. And there's more, but the ones we're going to talk about are polynomials, rational functions, trig functions, and root functions. And <clears throat> in these problems, what we're going to do is basically just find any discontinuities that might exist. <clears throat> so notice in this problem, we have a piecewise defined function. Our first function is a polynomial, x squared plus 3x. So by this little result we just talked about, this is continuous everywhere. Well, it's defined for values less than 0, so it's continuous on that interval. Likewise, square root of x plus 1 is a root function, and it's continuous for x greater than or equal to 0. The only place where there might be a discontinuity would be at x equals 0. Okay, so to address that question, we have to look at the limit as x approaches 0 of our function, and we have to determine if that equals f of 0. Well, to determine f of 0, that's easy enough. We just have to plug that into our correct function. Okay, so which piece do we plug it into? Well, obviously, well, we need to plug it into the second one since um, it says for x greater than or equal to 0, we use the second function. So we'll get square root of 0 plus 1 or 1. So now we have that f of 0 equals 1. And again, we have to figure out is the limit as x approaches 0 of that function equal 1. Well, in this case as well, um, to figure out the limit as x approaches 0, we'll have to look at a limit as x approaches 0 from the left, and we'll have to look at the limit as x approaches 0 from the right. If we look at 0 from the left, well, we're taking values of x less than 0, so we'll use the x squared plus 3x function. This is a case where you could simply plug the uh, value of 0 in and get your limit to be 0. If we calculate the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, well now we have to use, since we're approaching 0 from the right, we're using values of x just a little bit bigger than 0. So we'll have to use our square root of x plus 1 portion of the function. And again, if we plug that in, we'll see that the limit equals, in this case, 1. So what does this all mean? Well, if you saw the last video, basically what's happening, the limit doesn't even exist. On one side, it says it's going to the value of 0. Um, and then on the other side, it's going to the value of 1. Okay, so obviously not quite the correct graph. I guess I should graph them without too much issue. So the one on the left is going to be a parabola. It's approaching 0. The square root function is up here at 1. Um, basically, there's just going to be a little jump discontinuity in your graph at this point. So you can graph x squared plus 3x and then a square root of x plus 1 and, and uh, check and see that this happens. All right, so let's do the same uh, same type of problem. And in this problem, I'm going to have a piecewise defined function with three pieces. Alright, so here our piecewise defined function, it'll be 2x plus 1 if x is less than or equal to negative 1, it'll be 3x if x is in between negative 1 and 1, and it'll be 2x minus 1 if x is greater than or equal to 1. So again, all of these are just linear functions. They're going to be continuous on their respective domains. The only questions we really have to figure out again is the limit as x approaches negative 1, of f of x, does that equal f of negative 1? Because that's where there might potentially be a, great, a break in the graph when I go from using one function to the other. 
So that's one question we'll have to answer. The other question we'll have to answer will be, does the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, does that equal f of 1? Okay, because that's again where the kind of the second graph, um, there might be a little jump or a break or a hole. So again, it's easy to calculate f of negative 1. It says the first function is the one I use for x coordinates less than or equal to negative 1. So I'll get 2 times negative 1 plus 1, which is negative 2 plus 1 or negative 1. Okay, so now I need to calculate my limit just like we did it in the last problem. So I'm going to look at the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left. So if I look at the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left, that's values less than negative 1. So I'll use my 2x plus 1 portion. Again, if you plug negative 1 in, we just did that, you get negative 1 out. And then if I look at the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right, well again, you're assuming you're using values just a little bit bigger than negative 1, so I'll need to use my second um, part of my piecewise defined function, and I'll get 3x. But if I plug negative 1 in, here I get negative 3. Well, since the limit is not equal, um, in this case, since they both equal finite numbers, it means we have a jump discontinuity at that portion in the graph. Okay, so likewise, we need to just check the other. Does the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x equal f of 1? Again, to calculate f of 1, it says, okay, the bottom part of the function is the part you use for x values greater than or equal to 1. So we'll get 2 times 1 minus 1, or we'll get the value of 1. And in the same way to calculate our limit, we'll have to do the limit as x approaches 1 from the left. We'll have to do the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. We have to be careful and just pick the appropriate functions. So it says if I do 1 from the left, that's a little bit smaller than 1. We would use our 3x portion. And if you plug 1 in, we'll get 3 times 1, or 3 is our value. If we look at the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, that's a little bit bigger than 1. If you plug that in, it looks like you get you'll have 2x minus 1, and if you plug in 1, um, again in this case you're going to get the value of 1 out. So it looks like we have another jump discontinuity um, at the x value of positive 1 as well. So, okay, so just a couple little examples there. You're basically calculating limits, um, and, well you're calculating limits on all of these. So um, if you want to see some more examples, send me an email. This is kind of the basic procedure. Um, certainly there's variations, lots of variations to these problems, but um, this seems to be kind of a core type of uh, question that you'll see in calculus. So all right, I hope it helps. Good luck.